radioactivity, and half-life. Welcome to this video on nuclear chemistry, where we will explore the fascinating world of radioactivity and half-life. Radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of particles or energy from the nucleus of an unstable atom, which results in the transformation of the atom into a different element. This process is also known as radioactive decay. Radioactivity was first discovered by Henry Beckwild in 1896 when he observed that uranium salts emitted rays that could penetrate through opaque materials. Later, Marie and Pierre Curie discovered two new radioactive elements, polonium and radium, and coined the term radioactivity to describe the phenomenon. Radioactivity occurs because the nucleus of an atom is unstable and seeks to achieve a more stable configuration by releasing excess energy or particles. There are three types of radioactive decay, alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. In alpha decay, the nucleus emits an alpha particle, which is a helium nucleus consisting of two protons and two neutrons. In beta decay, the nucleus emits a beta particle, which is an electron or a positron. In gamma decay, the nucleus emits a gamma ray, which is a high-energy photon. Radioactivity has many practical applications, such as in nuclear power plants, medical imaging, and cancer treatment. However, it also poses significant risks to human health and the environment, especially if not handled properly. In the next segment, we will explore the concept of half-life and how it relates to radioactive decay. Radioactivity and half-life in the previous segment, we learned about the different types of radioactive decay. Now let's explore the concept of half-life and how it relates to radioactive decay. Half-life is the time it takes for half of the radioactive atoms in a sample to decay. This means that after one half-life, half of the original sample will have decayed, and after two half-lives, one quarter of the original sample will remain, and so on. The half-life of a radioactive substance is a characteristic property that depends on the type of radioactive decay and the specific isotope of the element. For example, the half-life of carbon minus 14, which is used in radiocarbon dating, is about 5,700 years, while the half-life of uranium minus 238, which is used in nuclear power plants, is about 4.5 billion years. The concept of half-life is important in many areas of science such as geology, archaeology, and medicine. In geology, the half-life of radioactive isotopes can be used to determine the age of rocks and minerals. In archaeology, Radiocarbon dating can be used to determine the age of organic materials such as bones and wood. In medicine, radioactive isotopes can be used for diagnostic imaging and cancer treatment. Understanding half-life is also important for assessing the risks and safety of radioactive materials. For example, the half-life of radioactive waste determines how long it will remain hazardous and how it should be stored and disposed of. In the next segment, we will explore the applications of radioactivity in nuclear power plants. Radioactivity and half-life Nuclear power plants generate electricity by harnessing the energy released from nuclear reactions. The most common type of nuclear reaction used in power plants is nuclear fission, which involves splitting the nucleus of an atom into two smaller nuclei, releasing a large amount of energy in the process. In a nuclear power plant, uranium-235 is used as fuel. Uranium-235 is a naturally occurring radioactive isotope that undergoes fission when bombarded with neutrons. The fission process releases more neutrons, which can then cause other uranium-235 atoms to undergo fission, creating a chain reaction. The energy released from the fission process is used to heat water, which produces steam that drives a turbine, generating electricity. Nuclear power plants are highly efficient and produce large amounts of electricity without emitting greenhouse gases or other pollutants. However, they also pose significant risks such as the potential for nuclear accidents and the production of radioactive waste. To mitigate these risks, nuclear power plants are designed with multiple layers of safety features, such as containment structures, emergency cooling systems, and backup power supplies. The nuclear waste produced by power plants is also carefully stored and monitored to prevent contamination of the environment. Despite the risks, nuclear power remains an important source of energy for many countries around the world. In the next segment, we will explore the medical applications of radioactivity. Radioactivity and half-life Radioactivity has many important applications in medicine, particularly in diagnostic imaging and cancer treatment. In diagnostic imaging, radioactive isotopes are used to create images of the inside of the body. One common technique is positron emission tomography PET, which involves injecting a small amount of a radioactive substance into the body. The substance emits positrons, which interact with electrons in the body, producing gamma rays that can be detected by a PET scanner. The resulting images can reveal information about the structure and function of organs and tissues. In cancer treatment, radioactive isotopes can be used to target and destroy cancer cells. One common technique is radiation therapy, which involves directing high-energy radiation at the tumor to kill the cancer cells. 
The radiation can be delivered externally using a machine called a linear accelerator or internally using radioactive implants or injections. Radioactive isotopes can also be used for other medical purposes, such as measuring blood flow and metabolism, detecting bone fractures, and treating thyroid disorders. While the use of radioactivity in medicine has many benefits, it also poses risks such as radiation exposure and the production of radioactive waste. Therefore, it is important to use these techniques only when necessary and to follow strict safety protocols. In the final segment, we will summarize the key concepts we have covered in this video. Radioactivity and Half-Life in this video, we have explored the fascinating world of nuclear chemistry, focusing on the concepts of radioactivity and half-life. We learned that radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of particles or energy from the nucleus of an unstable atom, which results in the transformation of the atom into a different element. There are three types of radioactive decay, alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. We also learned about the concept of half-life, which is the time it takes for half of the radioactive atoms in a sample to decay. Half-life is an important characteristic property of radioactive isotopes that is used in many areas of science, such as geology, archaeology, and medicine. We explored the applications of radioactivity in nuclear power plants, which generate electricity by harnessing the energy released from nuclear reactions. While nuclear power plants are highly efficient, they also pose significant risks, such as the potential for nuclear accidents and the production of radioactive waste. We also discussed the medical applications of radioactivity, particularly in diagnostic imaging and cancer treatment. While these techniques have many benefits, they also pose risks such as radiation exposure and the production of radioactive waste. Overall, nuclear chemistry is a complex and fascinating field that has many practical applications and significant risks. It is important to use these techniques responsibly and to follow strict safety protocols to minimize the risks and maximize the benefits. Thank you for watching this video on nuclear chemistry.